Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Wally Zankan, and I'm the uh, president of Hamilton Rotary. I'd like to welcome you to the 2022 uh, Greater Hamilton Chamber of Commerce's State of the Schools Red Carpet Luncheon. And to get started, can we welcome Sammy Broyles for prayer and pledge. Thank you, Mr. President. So can we bow our heads? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for an opportunity to come together in fellowship. We thank you for who you are, and we ask on this day that you continue to watch over our city officials, elected officials, as they make decisions, watch over our schools and school boards and the students as they go through these challenging times. And we also pray for situations around the world that we know that's going on, Father, that your hand is at, is at, at move around it. And Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity and actually bless the food that was already eaten and the ones that's getting ready to be eaten. Thank you in your name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty Justice Thank you. Thank you, Sammy. Next, can we please all welcome Dan Bates, President and CEO of the Greater Hamilton Chamber of Commerce. Good afternoon, everyone. We're thrilled to see you here today. It's great to be back. Um, this is the only event that we suspended during COVID-19. Everything else proceeded, but this is the only event that we did have to postpone. Um, and so we're glad to be back. So the um, school leaders today have a couple of years to catch us up on today. So we're, we're excited to hear from that in just a little bit. Uh, once again, welcome on behalf of the Greater Hamilton Chamber of Commerce. And I want to thank our centennial sponsors, Barclays, Business Breakthrough Advisors, Butler Tech, City of Hamilton, First Financial Bank, Kettering Health Hamilton, Mercy Health Fairfield Hospital, and U.S. Bank. And most of all, we want to thank our event sponsor today, Butler Tech. I also want to thank TV Hamilton, great partner with us, who is always here for us. So thank you, Steve, and the crew at TV Hamilton. And we also want to thank our partners, the Journal News. So with that, I am excited to bring up our first speaker, Brian Pendergast, from, um, as the principal of Baden High School. Brian. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'd like to thank the Rotary Club, Linda Wall Kiwanis, and the Greater Hamilton Chamber of Commerce for the opportunity to speak with you today. It's always an honor to participate in this event. A lot has changed in, since the last time we had this event in March of, or February of 2020. We've lived through and continue to cope with a, a pandemic which dramatically altered the way that all of us have worked. The way students experienced learning for the last year plus has been completely different than anything you or I ever experienced. I'm pretty sure that not, not a teacher or an administrator in here or in the country, quite honestly, that has ever taken a class on how to teach during a pandemic. We had classroom, kids that were in classrooms, students that were attending by Zoom, others that were watching recorded lessons because they were too sick to be there during the normal day. To say that we are just trying to survive at certain times is probably pretty accurate. Even though the educational system experienced great difficult, very difficult times and the methods that we used to deliver lessons changed, there is one thing that the pandemic definitely proved. Teachers are extraordinary. Teachers are resilient. Teachers are creative. And teachers truly care about their students. The time, dedication, and creativity teachers demonstrated during the most stressful times was nothing short than amazing. All teachers deserve a huge round of applause for everything they did to make sure their students were learning and succeeding under very difficult times. Thank you. 
another positive that came out of the pandemic is the creativity of teachers and students and how they, the courses were taken and how they were structured. The use of Zooms, which I think many of us would be fine if we ever never used again, uh, was definitely beneficial. Recorded classes and Google Classroom have proven to be great tools for teachers and for students who invariably are going to be out from time to time. Specifically, the teachers at Baden did an outstanding job during the pandemic to make sure our students continued to receive an outstanding education and had the tools and resources to succeed now and in the future. I want to publicly thank the faculty and staff of Baden for not only making it through a very difficult time in education, but exceeding all expectations. We did not miss one day of in-person instruction last year or this year due to the pandemic. Proof that our faculty and staff have done an outstanding job is evident in our enrollment. The current freshman class came in at 182 students. That was the largest class in 15 years. Next year's freshman class is coming in at 187. This is a direct result of the tremendous job of our faculty and staff. As the only Catholic high school in Butler County, we play an important role in the educational landscape of the area. 85% of our students are Catholic. However, we serve students from all different faith backgrounds. It's our mission to inspire young men and women to achieve their personal best, live their faith, and lead the future. We take this mission seriously in every aspect of our school. Every student has God-given gifts and talents. Each student will excel in different areas. Our job is to help students discover their gifts and talents and develop them to their fullest. Our curriculum allows students to find their interests and develop skills to build a foundation for success. We have students who need academic support, and we have students who take academic classes way beyond anything I took in high school. Regardless of the education, their students' academic ability or future career goals, we have a wide variety of classes that will challenge them to achieve their personal best. If a student's passion is in the arts, music, technology, theater, engineering, business, or one of our core courses, we have it at Baden. We continue to add AP and CCP courses to allow students to earn college credit while they're at Baden. Our guidance counselors do an excellent job of providing opportunities for students to learn about numerous college and career options, bringing in various speakers from colleges, from the trades, and from first responders is a primary focus of our guidance counselors. We added a third guidance counselor this past year with the primary focus of helping our incoming freshmen transfer, or transition from junior high to high school. This has been an excellent addition to our guidance program. Additionally, we partnered with Catalyst Counseling to provide mental health counseling for our students. Having a mental health professional in our building has been a great resource for many of our students. Since the last day of the school event, we've expanded our campus. With the Student Development Center, which connects the main building to the Fearman Family Activity Center. This addition houses the Hamilton Community Foundation College and Career Center for our counselors, a new campus ministry and Christian service area, our admissions and advancement departments, along with our student commons. The student commons area provides much needed space for students to work on group projects, gather for meetings, and listen to college and career presentations. Many teachers will take their classes to the Commons just for a change of pace and allow for various learning activities. This $2 million project was the first addition to the building since we added the Fearman Center back in 2005. Serving God, serving others is the motto at Baden High School. Faith formation is our primary responsibility. We live out our fit motto through our religion classes, retreat programs, Christian service programs, and mission trips. Each of these provide our students and teachers a way to use their God-given talents and make a difference in the world and to live out their faith. Our Christian service program is a source of pride. Our seniors this week have been presenting to their peers regarding the impact that their service project had on our community. Next week, we will welcome parents and community members to the Stang Symposium where students will once again be presenting to their service projects to our guests. We are blessed to have ter ter terrific students and we love celebrating their successes. Case Trokens was named a National Merit Finalist and she also joined is in Canton right now with nine other swimmers, 
including her sister, for this week's state championship swimming meets. Our girls volleyball and soccer teams won district championships for the second straight year. Our football team enjoyed an undefeated season and made it to the state finals. And these are only a few of the many reasons we're proud of our students. As I mentioned earlier, Baden High School continues to grow. We believe this is due to the outstanding education and faith development that our students receive. Students have the opportunity to receive a top-notch education, work with tremendous teachers who take our mission to heart and strive to help every student achieve their personal best. One of the main reasons we're able to do this is because of our school board. Several of them are here today, and I'd like to publicly thank them for providing the guidance, support, and encouragement that we get that helps us live out our mission. Their vision, leadership, and leadership have made a huge difference for our school now and in the future. On behalf of the faculty, staff, and students of Baden, I'd like to thank all of you for your support and encouragement that you provide not only to Baden, but to all the schools in the Hamilton, greater Hamilton area. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today, and please know that you're always welcome to stop by and see for yourself the Baden family in action. It's now my pleasure to introduce John Graff, Superintendent, CEO of Butler Tech. Good morning to everyone. First, I want to thank uh, Dan Bates and the Chamber, Rotary, and the Kiwanis for having us here today. Um, specifically, Dan Bates, I want to give him a nice round of applause. He's done a great job during the pandemic at helping keep us connected to our community and business. Um, one, of the, one of the best chambers in the area, and it's a result of Dan. So at Butler Tech, there, there's a sense of urgency that we are working to move at the speed of business to prepare students to meet the demands of the workforce. And some of you are asking, why are we doing that? Some of you are asking, why? So say, why? Why are we? I'm glad you asked that question. Here's some statistics that I think you need to know. 47% of the jobs in the U.S. could be phased out due to techno technological advances. 65% of secondary students are predicted to work in jobs that do not yet exist. And 75% of companies expected to be listed on the S&P 500 in 2027 have yet to be established. When you take some of that information along with the fact that there are almost 111,000 unfilled jobs in our region, Butler Tech and CTE program areas, specifically speaking, 47,000 healthcare jobs advanced manufacturing jobs with currently 39,000 jobs available for welders, machinists, and advanced manufacturing, and with over 550 aerospace engineering firms in Ohio alone, those three areas are the areas in which we're paying uh, most attention to and which we're concentrating our efforts at expanding our programs. So some of you may ask, how are we going to do this? Some of you are asking, how are we going to do this? I'm so glad you asked. Uh, first, we have to expand the capacity of our campuses. And, it, and it's a pleasure working with our associate schools, uh, specifically uh, Hamilton City Schools, who does a great job in helping, with, helping us with that. This past year for our upcoming 22-23 school year, we had to have a lottery in order for our students to get into our programs for next year. I am a little bit disappointed in that, that, that the um, sad fact is we had 2,270 applications and we will accept almost 1,500 students next year. Remember the statistic, 111,000 jobs that are available. We will turn away 700 students on our secondary campuses uh, due to our limited capacity to expand. Some of you will also, uh, just to note, we do not look at grades, attendance, or discipline data for our students to get into our programs. So some of our students are the most gifted students in this region. Other students are, are students who are struggling and, and, and need a second chance. And so we, we want to try to meet the needs of all of those students. But I can tell you that some of the things that we are doing to address it, we're adding a junior welding cohort next year, which means we're going to be expanding our welding program. We're adding a senior-only welding 
cohort. Um, and if some of you are, are dissatisfied with the current job that you're in, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand because uh, that wouldn't be prudent to do so. But if you want to get into our welding programs and our adult education programs, come and see me or Butler Tech staff if you'll raise your hand uh, and our board members as well. You can see them. They can get you into one of our welding programs in the adult education. But these students are going to be able to obtain industry credentials while in their senior year of high school. They're going to be able to jumpstart their career. Many of our students are already working in the middle of their junior year of high school. We're also adding an EMT program for all of those first responders. We know uh, the work that you did over during the pandemic and what you do throughout uh, your careers. We're adding an EMT program. And finally, an urgency that we have is to solve the school funding issue. We are asked to do predict 10 years into the future for our workforce on a five-year forecast and a biennium budget at the state legislature. It just doesn't make sense. And any of those business owners that are in the audience, raise your hand. None of you run your businesses that way. And we need to finally fix school funding. Um, I'm happy to announce that not only are we creating employ employees, we're adding employers into the economy. Uh, we are adding an entrepreneurship coordinator next year to help balance those employees, employers in response to the emergence of student startup businesses, student-based enterprises, as well as student-driven patents and copyrights, all of which we have at Butler Tech. Secondly, one thing that we need to address, I guess you are asking the question, how else? I'm glad you asked that question. We do need to expand our facilities. Uh, I'm proud of the fact that we're expanding our Natural Science Center in Monroe, a new 25,000 square foot facility designed with student voice and input in mind, complete with an outdoor learning commons, outdoor project areas, indoor outdoor classrooms, and environmentally conscious elements, and room for program expansion. We also have two other projects uh, that we're hopeful to receive funding through our, our Butler County commissioners, who I know uh, Commissioner Carpenter's in the audience today. Um, we are wanting to partner with um, Miami University Hamilton to, to build an advanced manufacturing lab in Hamilton. We're also looking to expand an aviation education hangar in Middletown. And by the way, for all of you that are thinking, was aviation important in this region? Within the United States, we already talked about the 550 aerospace firms that are in Ohio, but currently the United States transports 10 million people and $18 billion worth of goods every single day. And if we think what that's going to be like in 10 years from now, the aerospace industry in Ohio could and can be very strong if we support some of these efforts. So how else will we be able to do that? Partnerships, partnerships, partnerships working with the Hamilton City Schools to expand programs within their own campuses. They do a great job of partnering with us. When we say it's Butler Tech, it's also Hamilton City Schools as well. Working with Miami University, Hamilton, which I just mentioned, uh, but also working with Miami University to help develop a bachelor degree pathway for a nursing program so that high school students can matriculate into our adult education programs and then can ultimately go on to Miami Regionals. Working with our county commissioners that I've already spoken, with, uh, spoken about, working with Cincinnati State on expanding our bioscience facility, working with companies like 80 Acres, who the city of Hamilton did a great job of, of bringing in 80 Acres, um, Reinstall, Procter & Gamble, all of these folks will be going with us, going with Butler Tech to both Columbus and Washington, D.C. to begin advocating for this workforce crisis that all of us are facing. So I ask, or you ask, what can we do? First and foremost, here's what I would tell you. There, there are a number of people who can solve our problems that are within this room. And many of us go and we eat the chicken and we have the dessert. I haven't had the dessert yet, but it looks very good and I plan to as soon as I sit down. Um, and we eat, we network with the people that we know, and then we leave. What I'm asking you to do today is find someone in the audience before you leave today that you don't know, that you haven't made a connection with, whether it's a business member, whether it's somebody in the education field, whether it's somebody that works for the city, whether it's somebody in, in community development. Make that connection and have a conversation about what you're doing to address 
some of the workforce issues that we have in this region. Make that phone call. Take that meeting that you wouldn't necessarily think that you need to take. Lastly, this is an advice for all of us, including myself as well. Don't underestimate this generation of students. I'm not sure of the generation of students that sometimes social media tells us that we're interacting with, but the students that I see in our school systems, the students that I see on our campuses at Butler Tech are remarkable. They're solving problems for Bill Stein as high school students. They're getting their associate's degrees before leaving high school. They're developing an animatronic display for Children's Hospital to ease the anxiety of patients. This generation of students who, or I have also seen this generation of students who are the essential workers who worked and increased their hours during the pandemic and may have been the only family member that was working during the pandemic. And so I think it's high time that we provide every opportunity for this generation of students to be the new greatest generation. And so with all of that being said, I urge you, the, the collective wisdom in this room, we can do it together. And Butler Tech is part of that solution. And so we encourage you to connect with one another, network with one another, and continue to do great things for this community. It's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Andy Durajaye, Vice President and Dean of Miami University Regionals. Good afternoon. So you know when you take away that PowerPoint opportunity, you take away people's security blankets. So now you have to remember what you got to say, and, and I didn't bring my notes, but I'm excited to connect with you all today to talk about the amazing things that we have going on at Miami University Regionals, but also about the amazing things we're doing here within this Hamilton community and the greater Butler County area. You know, when you think about the higher education landscape, and so uniquely situated, we are, we're looking at the long term. You know, John Graff talked about and gave a lot of stats about jobs and the jobs that aren't created and that, that will be created in the future. And an interesting stat I saw, because I think stats matter, is that by 2050, over 70% of the jobs that will be available will require a bachelor's degree. Now think about that number. 70% of the jobs. In our community, and I, I mentioned this last week when I met with the Rotary, in our community here in Hamilton, only 14% of our population have a bachelor's degree or higher. So think about from the standpoint of 70% of the jobs of the future and what the talent workforce we currently have. And so when you hear that, you recognize we've got a challenge of how we build that stronger pipeline, how we build that connection so we can make sure our community can fill the need going forward. And so at the regionals, one of the things you'll hear me talk about and we try to emphasize more and more is that we want to partner, we want to collaborate to create those pathways and those pipelines so we can meet the needs for the future. Now, when we look at our current strategic vision, I was not here at the beginning of the pandemic, so I can't speak to what happened before me, but I think we are on sound foot and heading the right direction. Our big focus are three areas. How can we increase access? How do we give more opportunity to more individuals to take advantage of higher education and what higher education can give you from a benefit standpoint? The next strategic priority is how do we complete completion? How do we make sure that we offer flexible opportunities and ways that folks, regardless of your lot in life, how much money you have, your background, your first generation status, you can be successful. And then ultimately, our third strategic priority is how can we make sure that we are engaging with community? How can we make sure that we are out talking to the community, understanding the community's needs, and then make sure we're tailoring our work to meet those needs? So when you think about access, there's a couple areas that we really focused on with access. You know, the first is what are our pathways and what are the ways that we make sure that individuals can access us? You know, when you think about higher education and when you think about Miami specifically, it can be scary for individuals, especially if you don't have experience with that. And so what we're trying to do is be intentional about how we can go out and actively engage with our partners. Uh, my colleague Mike Holbrook is going to come up a little bit and he'll talk about some things that we're doing, but I'll give you an example of a great access initiative we're doing. This fall, we're going to be launching the first early college academy at Miami University, but also the first early college academy in Southwest Ohio. And this is a partnership between Hamilton City Schools and Middletown City Schools where we're going to bring their students to our campus and they're going to simultaneously complete high school but also earn an associate's degree. And when they're doing this, these students are also going to do this at zero cost to them. So remember when I told you that initial stat about the number of individuals who had a degree? 
we're working collaboratively in this community to think about ways how we can solve those issues. And so that's just one example of what we're thinking about from an access standpoint. But it's something we want to model and prioritize so we can do it broader for more students and more families because we see the benefit. Also, when we think about access, another big area that we're focused on is affordability. You know, when you think about college and when you hear what's going on in the, the, the media, oftentimes the discussion is that college is too expensive. And I'm here to tell you that, quite, fact, quite frankly, college is not too expensive. If you look at the regionals, our four-year degrees can be completed for under $25,000. So think about that. That's a Miami degree for under $25,000. And one thing I always like to point out is the post-graduation outcome, so career outcomes, career earning outcomes, for the Miami regionals are only $1,500 less than our Oxford counterparts. So when you start thinking about ROI, when you start thinking about those things that really, really matter, we're committed to that work and we're doing the work right now. So again, we want to continue to go forward and do more with that. You know, when we think about completion, this is a big area. How do we promote completion of a degree or completion of a credential or completion of whatever it is that a student's looking to do? Here in Ohio alone, we have 1.2 million adults with some college but no degree. 1.2 million adults with some college and no degree. That means we have 1.2 million individuals who started out on the road and never finished and never got an opportunity to reach the benefits of it. And so one of the things that we've got to make sure we're doing is we create programs that can be flexible, that can reduce the time to degree, that can make sure that individuals, regardless of where you're coming from, regardless of what your situation is, we can find a way for you to see it through. I was looking at a recent article and they talked about the fact that pre-pandemic pre and post-pandemic, we've seen almost a million a million student drop in enrollment in higher education. And half of that drop is comprised of just four states. First state being California, second state being New York, third state being Texas, which makes sense because they're the largest states. But the fourth state is Ohio. So think about that. We are the 10th largest state in the country right now, but we are part of that group that compiles over half of the drop in college going. Now I'll add another layer to that. With that drop in college going, they are estimating that over lifetime earnings, a trillion dollars are gonna be left on the table. And think about that, a trillion dollars being left on the table from students here in our region, here in our state, not going on to college. So it's an imperative for us to make sure that we think about ways that we can do that as well. And third, as I mentioned before, the big thing that we want to focus on, and I, you know, I'll go and speak to anybody who will listen to me, is how do we increase engagement with our community? You know, at the regionals and Miami University, we exist to serve our communities. And so we've got to find a way that we can better engage. What are our community needs? And then how do we meet the needs of our community? You know, I talked about in the K-12 space, the early college space, one of the things we're working on. But another big area we're looking at is transfer. Here within our region, we have over 25,000 students who are starting out at two-year institutions. And of those 25,000 students, over 80 of them originally intend to complete a four-year degree. But when you look at the numbers of students that actually do, we're down in the teens and single digits. And so again, we've got to do more to build those stronger pathways, to go out and say, what is the need and how do we meet the need? You know, another big area that we've been looking at is how do we partner with industry to think about our micro-credentials and how do we help folks upskill and better themselves in their careers. Uh, recently, we were awarded an IMAC grant, which is an individual micro-credential award program grant, where we can now pay for individuals who are going to take micro-credentials to upskill themselves, and we can get them compensated for it. So again, it'll be at no cost to those individuals. And that's really exciting when we think about what's going forward and how we serve all our different communities. You know, I'm super excited to be here. I'm super excited for the future of Miami Regionals, but I'm super excited for the educational ecosystem that we're creating here. You know, working with Baden, working with Hamilton City Schools, working with Butler Tech, we work with very closely. I think we can create a space where no matter who you are, no matter what you look like, no matter what your background is, or how much money you have in your bank account, you can be successful, you can matriculate, and ultimately, you can reap the benefits that we know you'll reap from increased education. So without a doubt, without any further ado, it's my opportunity to now uh, introduce Mr. Mike Holbrook, Superintendent of Hamilton City Schools. First of all, I do want to thank the Rotary Club, Lyndon Wald Kiwanis, as well as the Hamilton Chamber for having me today. Looking out today, it doesn't escape me the importance that Hamilton places on education. This is a full house. That, that speaks volumes about the importance that Hamilton has placed on education, not only at the you, you know, lower levels, but also at the university level. And I think that's evident by the number of people here today. Before we move on, I do want to recognize a few individuals that I know are in the audience. Our five school board members all are here today, and 
you may or may not be aware we've had a little bit of a rough patch here in the last several months. I want to recognize those five. Lauren Sprague, board president, Meg Baker, board vice president, Steve Isgro, school board member, Dave Davison, school board member, and Shaquille Matthews, school board member. Could you please stand and be recognized? Thank you for putting students first and the, looking at things out of that lens and that lens only when, when we've had to tackle some really difficult decisions. Also, we have a group of administrators, teachers here today, and I want to recognize those individuals as well. As you know, every educator in Ohio and throughout the country has gone through extensive changes over the last 24 months. And so if you are here in any capacity representing Hamilton City Schools, could you stand and be recognized today? <laughs> the next group of individuals that I do want to recognize are our parents. If you think and look out of a parent's lens on what adjustments they've had to make over the last 24 months, not only from the educational environment, but their own homes. You, you know, going on complete remote learning for a period of time, going on a hybrid schedule, which I didn't even know what a hybrid schedule was until about a year ago, um, and, and adjusting to um, virtual learning and, and having that encumbered in your home is quite a difference in, in approach. And our parents had to do that and had to also figure out how to go to work every day. And so I want to recognize the many hardships that they've gone through and, and, under, and we do understand that is significantly challenging. And so if you are a parent of any student in Hamilton City Schools, what we first want to do is say thank you. Thank you for your flexibility. <clears throat> our last state of the schools was January 16th, 2020. Since then, in March, they shut down the entire school system in the state of Ohio. Our teachers had to convert to virtual learning. I learned a new term, Zoom, and I'm still not, I, that was a TV show when I was growing up, by the way. <laughs> you know, I learned new terms such as Moderna, vaccination, quarantine. I did not think I would use those terms on a daily basis like I have the last 24 months. When this first came about, I sat down with our leadership team and I remember looking at all of them and I, I said, this is going to be a test for us. This is going to be a test with our capacity. And you know, with that, we're going to find out truly what, what leadership's all about and do we have the capacity as leaders. See, I, I believe it's easy to lead when a template's laid out for you and, and, and many of these decisions are predetermined. There was no predetermining anything with what we have dealt with over the last 24 months. We had to look at, we had to look at all the data and information we had in front of us and make the best decisions we could based off the data available at that time. And I'm proud to say that Hamilton City Schools, our district, our, our administration, our teachers, uh, our food service, our custodial and maintenance, our um, transportation, we all stood up and led. And I think that that is really, really, really important. We didn't shy away from difficult decisions. We were leaders in those decisions with an eye out on what is best for our students and our community. So, with all of this, the big talk is about combating learning loss. How are you going to combat learning loss? One of the things that was spoken to me many years ago is, don't tell me what's important. Let me see your checkbook and I'll tell you what's important. Importance is where you spend your money. Importance is where you invest your resources. For years, educators have gotten up here and they've stated, the most important and influential person in education is the teacher in the classroom. Now, I've done this 31 years. I've seen hundreds of programs that were supposed to be the magic dust 
that was supposed to combat learning loss and, 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 and you, you know, remediate deficiencies. But it all comes back to who is the teacher in the classroom. So we've had an opportunity to combat that learning loss, and we're going to put our money where our mouth is. And so what we've done is we looked at research, and we devised something called co-teaching, which is not an uncommon piece, but we have two teachers in most of our classrooms, K through three. That reduces those class sizes. It allows us to get smaller groups, and we were aggressive on hiring those individuals. We recruited at job fairs when no one else would go out, and we got a tremendous group of young teachers working with our kids every day. Additionally, we provided smooth transitions by having them come to the district and visit Hamilton, taking them a tour of the city, trying to get them ingrained into what's going on in Hamilton because it's bigger than just what's going on in the classroom. In order to teach a child, you have to understand their environment that they're coming from, and you have to understand what those needs are as well. And so exposing our young teachers, some of which are not from Hamilton, to what that looks like was a critically important piece to our transition with, with our teachers. And we've done that, and we are starting to see some significantly exciting gains in our most recent testing with that. And so we look forward to that over the next 12 to 24 months, but the gains that we're seeing with that are almost unprecedented in some ways. And, and for that, that's a huge compliment to our entire team on that vision and our continued mentoring and support of that. We spoke a little bit earlier about access, and I, and I think we brought up about access to college, and 14%, and 14% of all individuals in Hamilton have a four-year college degree. 70% of those jobs by 2027 are gonna require that. Now, math wasn't my strongest subject, but that doesn't work very well. So one of the things that we're excited to be in partnership with is Miami Regionals because we know the cost of higher education can be tremendous. But the opportunity that we have set up is that for our incoming juniors, they will have an opportunity to attend Miami Regionals during the day come back to the high school if they're involved in extracurricular activities and do that for two years. We will bust them over there, we will bust them back. They can still be involved in anything extracurricular. At the end of those two years, at high school graduation, they will also earn an associate's degree and will be in good standing as a junior at 18 years old in any college and university, state college or university. And there are eight different focus areas that those students will get to select from. All eight of those give them the flexibility, starting as a junior, to go into an area of, of their interest. And that is an absolute outstanding opportunity, and it's a game changer for many of our students. And if you think about that from a parent perspective, you think about that from a student that really doesn't have any guidance on the college process, and it can be, it can be very treacherous. That is an opportunity that we are excited to extend to our students, and we believe more and more students are going to have access to not only associate's degrees, but we know at that point that the statistics will bear out many of those students will go on and get their four-year college degree. What an exciting opportunity, and I, I do appreciate all the help and collaboration with Miami Regionals. I appreciate all the support of you know, this community in, in envisioning that. The third partnership that's really important to us and is really starting to take hold is that with the city of Hamilton. I, I see Joshua Smith's back there somewhere. How you doing, Joshua? We, we have met on many occasions, and the city of Hamilton and Hamilton City Schools is partnering in a number of exciting ways. I'll go back to the pandemic for a second. The city health department worked with the city of Hamilton. We were able to set up vaccination sites. We had all of our teachers and employees vaccinated, but we also set up sites for students and we set up sites for families. And that was all done in collaboration with the city and, and, and Hamilton City Schools. 
Most recently, you've read about the possibility of Amtrak coming to Hamilton. Monday morning, Governor DeWine is going to receive 435 letters from, from high school juniors on the importance of Amtrak coming to Hamilton from a high school junior's perspective. And once again, collaborating with the city on that writing campaign, we hope it can make a little bit of a difference in the decision making with that. There are a number of additional projects that the city continues to work with Hamilton City Schools on, and we're, we're proud to be a partner in that relationship. As, and I continue to tell Joshua, you, you know, the city's success is our success, and our success is their success, and, and there's no way around that. For those of you that may not have a perspective, Hamilton City Schools is the 18th largest school system in the state of Ohio, and that's over, and that's with over 600 total school systems. So we, we, we certainly have a significant amount of influence, um, not only legislatively, but within Butler County, and I think that's important to recognize. The relationships and partners that we have and work with on a daily basis are too numerous for me to mention up here, but every one of those in par partnerships we recognize are extremely important to us and are needed to serve the many different needs that our students come to us with every day. The continuum of services that we provide is, is vast and broad, and without those partnerships, we would not be able to do that. A special thanks goes out to our long-standing relationships with Hamilton Baden, with Miami Regionals, and also with Butler Tech. Those educational partnerships are critical also to the success of all students. And we appreciate that and look forward to a very, very robust relationship in the future. One of the phrases we use in our district is you win with people. I could not be more blessed to work with such a dedicated group of individuals. When you think about the pandemic, our teachers have done a tremendous job. Try to teach a second grader how to read on Zoom. I can't get a second grader to sit down for 20 minutes, let alone trying to teach them to read on Zoom. But it's broader than that. With 9,500 students, we were fortunate enough to be able to involve our food services and some of our other groups in, 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 in helping our families in need and feeding them over the pandemic. We were fortunate in having a custodial and maintenance crew that worked on sanitation of buildings and, and, and signage and, and protocols that are all involved with that. You know, our transportation um, group went out and delivered meals into our communities during the midst of this pandemic. When no one else wanted to go out and do that, they, they went out and did that. And our teachers adapted with little to no notice into a virtual set. And, and we are extremely proud of being leaders in that process. You win with people. And I think that's an important thing to understand is the fact that we truly believe that. And sometimes you hire really good people and you figure out what they do later because they'll do an awful lot for your organization. I appreciate the opportunity to speak today. Big Blue is definitely on the move. And I thank you for your time and support. Thank you. Hi, my name is Peter Engelhard. I'm the president of Linda Waquanas for Hamilton and Fairfield. Uh, we appreciate everyone coming out today. Uh, appreciate all of the presenters speaking um, about what's going on in their schools, and I hope everyone has a safe day, uh, safe travels home, and I hope you come at the next red carpet luncheon. Thank you.